Hello. Uh, I'm so sorry for the delay. Uh, we have a, a technical issue here, but uh, I think it's uh, live now. So let's get started. Um, so today uh, I'm going to uh, give you uh, the second tutorial of this course about PyTorch. Uh, how many of you have heard PyTorch before? Yeah, actually, as you might know, that PyTorch actually is the number one machine learning tool in, in industry and academia. And uh, this is the tool you definitely need, definitely need to have to, to, to put down your resume. Okay. Uh, so today, uh, so this is the the other. So this is the agenda of today. So first, I will give you a uh, give you a brief introduction about what is the PyTorch and why we use PyTorch. And then I will talk about uh, how to install the PyTorch on your computer. And then we will go over several uh, go over several examples to see how to use PyTorch correctly in your uh, project and in your, in your future research. Uh, so what is PyTorch? So as uh, so PyTorch, first of all, PyTorch is uh, an open source machine learning library. Actually, this is the it is the number one machine learning number uh, uh, machine learning uh, uh, library in the field in the machine learning field. Uh, computer vision like the computer vision, uh, NLP, and uh, other stuff. And uh, it is uh, developed by uh, Facebook uh, AI Research Lab, which is also called FAIR. Uh, I, I think it's called a Meta, maybe it's called Meta AI Research Lab or something. And uh, the most uh, famous or well-known functionalities about uh, the PyTorch is that it can uh, use GPUs to accelerate your machine learning algorithms. So nowadays, the, the machine learning model gets bigger and bigger. Like the, uh, the NLP one, I think last year or this year, the, uh, the new, the latest NLP model called GPT-3 has trillions of parameters. So you cannot use, even though you have a very powerful server, um, 100 cores, 200 cores, you cannot train such kind of model using CPU only. It has to be trained out with uh, the resources of GPUs. And uh, so another uh, functionality about PyTorch, I think, is more important than GPU. It supports uh, which is the auto gradients. So in this course, when we uh, so, so so the pipeline of the machine learning, okay, you have the the data set, and then you have a machine learning model, and then you put the uh, feed your data set into the machine learning model, and then you get the prediction, and then you define the loss function, and in this course we want you to know every details about the. But the very famous, those famous uh, machine learning algorithms. So you need to derive the uh, derivatives of the loss function, the losses, uh, with respect to the parameters by hand. Then you need to implement the gradients uh, with the NumPy or SciPy, and then use SciPy optimizer to optimize it. But the machine learning model get complicated, more and more complicated. Um, you cannot actually you cannot hand derive the, those gradients. So then how do we do it? Then the PyTorch and the TensorFlow, those kind of machine learning tools, will compute the gradients uh, for, uh, for our uh, usage. Uh, the one thing to note here is that, so you might notice that the SciPy also have those uh, computer gradient, uh, gradient uh, for you, but those gradients is uh, it's like the numerical gradients. It's like uh, when you uh, study the calculus, how do we uh, compute uh, the gradients numerically? We just uh, uh, 
uh, in there some uh, very small perturbation, uh, perturbations and they divided by. So that's the kind of uh, numerical gradient. But the auto differentiate here is actually the true gradient. And uh, I will talk about later how, uh, how so the, the magic behind this. And uh, so basically the PyTorch uh, was targeted to accelerate the, the uh, deep learning applications, but now PyTorch, the, the code base of the PyTorch getting larger ladder, and basically you can use PyTorch to do anything you want, like you can implement not uh, the applications of uh, PyTorch not limited to the deep learning, and you can actually use it uh, for anything you want. And uh, it, uh, unlike the NumPy, the PyTorch is a full stack machine learning library. Basically, it, it has the solutions of the data, it has solution for building model, and it has solutions for uh, optimizers. Okay, so PyTorch is not the only deep learning tools uh, in the field. So, but the most famous ones are TensorFlow and the PyTorch, right? So the TensorFlow has two variants, TensorFlow 1 and TensorFlow 2. And the honestly speaking, uh, I think TensorFlow 1 is the best of two. But however, Google stops supporting it, and uh, it is a deprecated tool, a dep uh, deprecated uh, tool set. So, so now we have to transfer to PyTorch or TensorFlow 2 now. The TensorFlow 1 and the TensorFlow 2 are two different tools. So they are totally different. Ten TensorFlow 2 is more like PyTorch, but TensorFlow 1, the, uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, let's talk about this later. And uh, there are also a lot of uh, other uh, famous tools like the Cafe. Uh, I think Cafe is developed by uh, UC Berkeley. And then the uh, M X9 is developed by uh, Amazon and the uh, piano, I think it's a material, new material or uh, why you I can remember. Um, so what's what's the magic behind those all the differentiation? And uh, the magic is called uh, the commutational graph. So basically, um, when you um, uh, when, when you define uh, commutation procedures, like we want to do a linear operation, and those kind of PyTorch or TensorFlow will build a uh, commutational graph for you. And the nodes are on the, in the commutational graph are tensors, and the, the edges connecting those nodes are co your commutational uh, uh, procedures. Uh, computational pro procedures like the multiply, like the plus or take log, or take exponential, something like that. And uh, so, so basically, uh, so there are two kinds of uh, those computational graphs. The tensor, uh, uh, so you can you can uh, you can construct the, the computational graph by uh, on the fly uh, when you define running the program, or you after parse your program. And uh, it will generate a static computation graph. And uh, you can think that your input is a tensor and it flows on the edges. And I think that's why it called the tensor flow, right? So basically, tensor flow one does the static computation graph. It is very fast. And uh, now, uh, I think, but uh, the learning curve for the static uh, static, static implementation using the static uh, graph is, uh, is, is complicated. And uh, so now TensorFlow 2 and uh, PyTorch uh, are, uh, are transferred to uh, dynamic computational graph. Basically, they build the computational graph on the fly. Okay, so here is an example. So we are trying to do a uh, linear operation. Um, our input tensor A and B are the input tensor, and uh, and the one those, uh, the one uh, is the constant tensor, and the D is your uh, C is a intermediate tensor, and the D is your uh, function output. And uh, I, I think the, this is a, so the first one using NumPy. I, I think that's an appropriate example. Because NumPy 
do not construct those uh, conditional graphs here, but uh, you can see the diff uh, but the point is that you, 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 you need to assess the difference. So the you, know, you basically the uh, non pi is basically uh, you define a variable n b and the c uh, equals to uh, b b times a and the b d a is equal to c, uh, c plus one. That's basically what you need to do. But for uh, a static conditional graph, which is tensorflow one does, you can uh, you can see the in the lower uh, lower code. And then first, you need to specify A and B are variables. Then C times uh, C is equal to B plus uh, times A. That's constructed a uh, conditional graph, and the B, uh, also the B is equal to C plus a constant. Then the uh, the, uh, the key point is that uh, F is equal to compile D. Basically, you need to compile. Based, uh, do, uh, based on the definitions and the procedures, you need to compile a conditional graph, and uh, you, you see that the, the lower case D, uh, to get the values of lower case D, you need to feed A and B with some specific values. So that's the dynamic and the uh, difference between uh, dynamic and the static. Okay, so here's kind of a history of uh, different machine learning tools. I think it, it is also a, a decorative figure because TensorFlow One is uh, is a imperative tool, and uh, also PetWatch. Um, these are the relationship between between them, and the Cafe tool is uh, maintained by Facebook. It's developed by uh, UC Berkeley, and the PyTorch was original uh, from uh, NYU, and now it's uh, also maintained by Facebook. And the TensorFlow uh, the, uh, comes from Piano and uh, comes from uh, U of Material, and then now it's uh, it is under maintenance by uh, Google. So let's talk about the first uh, functionality, which is the GPU, the CPU, and the GPU. And uh, the access uh, on the left hand figure, these are different uh, famous, famous, uh, famous uh, computer vision uh, models like the VGG and the ResNet. And the blue bar is the training time on CPU, and then the red bar and the, the orange bar are the training time on GPU. You can see that by using the GPU, uh, the improvement is uh, substantial. And uh, that's for training. And then uh, you can use Torch or TensorFlow as a general condition tool. You can you see that if it also improves the performance. If you want to do a matrix model fusion, uh, three by uh, three thousand by three thousand matrix multiplication. If you do with NumPy on CPU, it uh, takes like uh, 30, uh, 350 milliseconds, and uh, if you do PyTorch, it just takes 0.1 milliseconds. Um, so why do we use PyTorch? So first of all, it is uh, Python, uh, more more Pythonic. It's uh, as long as you can use Python, you can use uh, you can use PyTorch. Why you where we use PyTorch is more in the flavor of Python. If you have experience writing TensorFlow One code, the code of TensorFlow One is totally different. It's not like Python, and uh, of course, uh, all the, those machine learning model, uh, machine learning framework support GPUs and uh, all the differentiation. And uh, PyTorch is well supported by the community and Facebook. The, the, the code is well documented. It's much better than the documentation of PyTorch is much better than uh, TensorFlow. So you can basically, it has a lot of building um, functions, modules, uh, optimizers. Even though you literally know nothing about machine learning, you can use it as, uh, as a as a tool for your uh, project if you are not a computer science student. 
So, and it is very seamlessly uh, to NumPy. As long as you can use NumPy and the learning curve, will, there, is, there will be no learning curve to use PyTorch majority. So, you can see this is example, and uh, the word by passage is uh, an example of conventional graph. And if I want to implement something like with the NumPy, the PyTorch is not a proper example here, because NumPy, as I uh, say that uh, set. so the NumPy does not construct those conventional graphs and you need to derive the gradient with hand uh, some, uh, and implement the gradient. And then this is the TensorFlow 1 uh, called uh, TensorFlow 1 code. So you can see uh, you need to, so x is uh, x, y, z, you need to specify x, y, z are uh, placeholders. Basically you need to tell the program that I'm, I'm going to input values into those uh, variables. And ABC defines the conditional graph. And also you take the grades. And all this needs to be running the uh, transport station. And uh, you need to, uh, uh, in here you see you need to provide XYZ with uh, values to run to get values of C. And this is a PyTorch code this is much concise than TensorFlow 1 and NumPy. So, so PyTorch actually is the number one tool in uh, academia. This is uh, this figure shows the uh, report uh, on different uh, top tier uh, artificial intelligence conferences. How many papers accepted using PyTorch as their as their uh, development tools. You can see after 2019, the PyTorch is becoming the dominant tool because it is easy to use. And uh, the PyTorch has uh, several uh, several level of abstractions. So, uh, so all the variables, all the data. So the basic uh, building block of PyTorch is uh, called Tensor. Uh, the Tensor is uh, no more than the ND array. That on um, with NumPy and the array is stored at the CPU, uh, CPU memory. But with uh, with PyTorch, you can actually transfer those and the array from the CPU to GPU to accelerate your machine learning algorithms. And another uh, kind of uh, abstraction is called the variable. But this is kind of a deprecated description. About, uh, because I think after uh, PyTorch 1.8 or 1.12, they don't distinguish the tensors and the variables. So basically, all the data, including the training data, parameters, uh, all of them are named as tensors. If you want to take the gradient, uh, you just need to specify this tensor is a required gradient. And then the module, and uh, that's a very powerful framework, uh, killer functionality of PyTorch. And uh, we will talk about this later. As you can see that, so what is tensor? Tensor is no more than a general uh, matrix. So you, if 1D tensor is a vector, the tensor is matrix, the end is cube, and then we have more and more, we have older, higher order tensors. So, so this is a brief introduction to the tensors. Uh, so for here you can uh, you can randomly initialize a tensor. If you want to the ten, uh, if you want to that tensor, if the ten, uh, that tensor is a parameter of the, the learning model, like uh, it could be the weights and the bias if you have a linear uh, regressor, and uh, you need to make it turn the fly of the request grade into two, or you just need to call the request grade um, underlying method. And uh, by default, the tensor object has two, uh, uh, two uh, members. So, uh, one is the data, which stores the value of that tensor. And then the, the tensor dot grid, um, uh, dot grid uh, stores the the values of the gradients of that tensor. If that tensor does not need actual uh, any gradients, it's just a zero. And uh, it also has a, uh, a member called grid function, which is a trace back. You can use that trace back uh, uh, operations, history of operations of gradients. But we are not going to use it. We just use it for if we within our algorithm correctly. 
the whole of the red respect here is an uh, example, but we are going to go over uh, it uh, in the lab demo. I'm going to skip that. Um, so basically, uh, as PyTorch, you can PyTorch uh, tensor, uh, you can how do we, we can randomly initialize it, use the PyTorch function, uh, random function, or you, we can load uh, a tensor from the NumPy. And how do we do that? We just call the from NumPy method, and then we generate a string uh, here is a uh, NumPy and the array. And then we, all, we can also convert a torch tensor into the NumPy uh, and the array by call from NumPy method. And, uh, if you want to transfer this uh, this tensor to GPU, just call L2, and uh, uh, then you need to uh, put a uh, device's ID into that process. Um, yeah, and on the right hand side figure, it is a sound check if you have a cool device on your laptop. Um, and, uh, other than that, I don't think we need to go over this. Um, so this is the autograde function. So this is a powerful package in packages, a package, a package in PyTorch. If you want to take a um, gradient of uh, output with respect to um, some tensor of some input, we need to make the input on the right hand here. We need to make the input request gradient is equal to two. And uh, we did, we call the uh, the function output the backward, and the uh, other will pass forward to trace back the condition of graph and distribute the gradient, computer gradient automatically. And uh, uh, one uh, uh, one thing, uh, one mistake, uh, if you are new to PyTorch, uh, is uh, one one common mistake is that. Uh, the, those gradients are accumulated. So basically, you, each time you call it a backward, and the it will uh, plus the, it will uh, add the new gradients to the previous gradient. So if you don't, so basically, so so that tells you that each time we call the backward, uh, take the auto gradients, we need to zero out the gradients manually. Uh, because if you don't do that, if you think that you have the SGD intuitive training procedure, if you don't call those zero gradient into in the for loop, then the gradients will accumulate, accumulate, and you will explode. Um, and uh, PyTorch has also has some uh, optimizers implemented, like Adam and uh, uh, SGD. Uh, Adam is the most Frequent optimizer we use in our applications, and uh, and uh, it also has some implemented false functions for regression task. We use uh, square loss, right? It is easy to implement. But if we we have a multi-class uh, classification task, uh, then we need to use the cross entropy uh, loss. But the cross entropy loss is not that it's not trivial to implement. If you are not very familiar with the tensor operations, you are going to make some mistakes. So, but TensorFlow has also not say PyTorch has the cross entropy and the several losses implemented for you. You just need to call it, and then you put your training data and what is your prediction, and I will compute the loss rate. And this is the model how you build your training model. Basically, the, the model uh, PyTorch implemented uh, the machine learning model uh, in the N module uh, object. So don't get fooled by its name. So it's, it is not just uh, for implementing the neural network. Actually, you can if you inherit the N module object, you can implement anything, anything you want. You need to define the parameters, uh, and uh, you need to provide a forward function to tell to tell the PyTorch how do you what's the uh, what's the forward uh, uh, computational procedure for. Um, so if that's an example of uh, self-implement uh, linear module. 
So PyTorch also has a lot of built-in uh, module you can use. Like if you don't, if you want to implement a convolutional neural network, but you are not very familiar with what is COM2D, a convolutional kernel, then you can just uh, use their uh, COM2D module and uh, use their linear module and uh, batch mode module and uh, dropout module. So basically, you can use PyTorch in different levels. If you are not very familiar with these things, you just use their building function and their as your building blocks. But if you want to do uh, some machine learning research, you can also use PyTorch to build your to build your own machine learning models. We are going to talk uh, talk about that uh, later. So how that's how do you implement PyTorch? Uh, I'm sorry, install PyTorch. So basically, if you go to the website of the PyTorch uh, official website, you, will, you can select what kind of version and what's your operating system and uh, uh, what kind of tools you want to use for installation and uh, and what's if you need to if or you need to the, the GPU support. And uh, we highly recommend you to use CUDA to uh, CUDA, CUDA to install your uh, packages, uh, install PyTorch, because it is CUDA will resolve the uh, package dependence this way. Um, you can also install PyTorch using the Docker, that's my uh, favorite. So the, basically, the Docker uh, has a Docker, they, they can change several, they can change the Docker's in a website called the Docker Hub. You can actually can uh, like the GitHub. You can just pull the their Docker's and use it. The PyTorch officially maintains a uh, repository for PyTorch Docker's. So basically, you can just use uh, this command to pull uh, Docker. The Docker is like a mini. Uh, virtual machines, but it will not sabotage your performance. Uh, so basically, you can just grab it and use it. And of course, but uh, learning uh, learning Docker is a uh, is a uh, is not that easy. And uh, but uh, I don't know. Um, so let's go over some examples. I put the uh, examples today's examples on my GitHub, and then I will make an announcement later after class on the on the canvas. So okay, so 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 the demonstrations are divided um, yeah, by five parts. First, I will talk about the basic uh, usage of PyTorch, like the auto differentiation, and uh, how do you provide, uh, how to use the data set and the data loader in the PyTorch. Then I will spend uh, time on NN module. If you are not doing machine learning research, and I think part one, part two is all you need. If you know how to use uh, part one, the go over examples of part one, part two, basically you can build anything you want. And of course, sometimes the Adam and SGD, uh, the, 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 the native settings of Adam and SGD is not uh, sufficient for us. Then in part three, I will talk about what kind of else we can do with the measures. And the part four, part four is, uh, so what if my machine learning model is not implemented by PyTorch? We don't have a building function, and uh, you have a very, suppose that you have a breeding idea, but the model looks very weird, and uh, PyTorch does not have the implementation. How do we use N module to implement the, the, the model uh, by ourselves from scratch? Then in part five, I'm going to we are going to um, uh, to uh, demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate a pipeline, the entire pipeline to use PyTorch to learn to train a convolutional neural network on CIFAR. So let's get started. So of course, uh, to use PyTorch, we need to import PyTorch. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Mm. Let's see what I can do here.
So any questions so far? Okay, so then let's go over some examples. Well, in order to use PyTorch, you need to uh, call the import PyTorch. And uh, the first thing we do is uh, to check if our computer is support uh, GPUs. So basically, you can use, in the first line, you can use torch.cuda is available. If it is available, then I use the GPU as default. And you can also print out uh, what kind of GPU you have and uh, use it and with the device ID. So now, on this computer, I have a uh, NVIDIA 3090. And I'm going to use it as the default devices for the following presentations. So let's look at uh, the first example, which is using the backward to compute the although the, the to, to compute the gradient. Suppose we I have three variables. Well, actually, uh, more precisely, x is not variable, but this is just for uh, demonstration. And uh, the weights are w and then y is b. Uh, let's ignore the sixth line uh, first. Let's ignore this line. And then I build a conditional graph. And y is our function output, right? So I want to compute the gradient of y with respect to x, w, b. And uh, so we can compute, you see, by calling this once, we can, we can uh, print out the, the, the gradients of uh, x, w, b is computed. And uh, on, the, on this side, these are the gradients I derived by, derived by myself because it is a linear regressor and we can compute the, the gradient uh, by ourselves. And you see that the gradient is, uh, is equivalent. And then now you can see uh, when you print a, a tensor, you can see what's the device. If uh, the tensor is on uh, GPU, then uh, there, there will be no device information. But uh, if, if it is on GPU, you can see that uh, this device is it's on uh, CUDA zero device. And uh, let's go back to line six. What's line six? Line six, basically, if you recall the conditional graph uh, um, in, the, in the slides, right? So the commutation graph is like the DAC, which is a uh, direct uh, I a psychotic, psychotic uh, graph. So, so if you have a DAC, then you have leaf nodes, and then your objective is uh, is the, is the uh, your optimal is uh, is not a leaf node, but your variables are leaf nodes. So, one thing to know here is that all the different work for if no. So even if you are new to this, even a trivial operation will make XWB non leaf node. So for example, so at the first glance, two, three, uh, line two, three, and the eight, nine, zero, they are doing the same thing. I want to, well, this is not uh, appropriate, I just uh, for They are doing the same thing. But here is the logic. So first I initialize a Python tensor, then I call the two devices and send it to the GPU. And then now X is not a leaf node. If X is not leaf node, let's see what will happen. There is error, and when we check, actually, is it a leaf or not? This is it's, it's not leaf node, and there is no gradient information. So be be aware of that. So, if I make it. Like two, three, four, it is a leaf node, the leaf node is true, and we can compute the gradient. So what is leaf node? I'm sorry. What is leaf node? Because it's uh it's the device is 
used as the parameters of the tensor method. So that's the uh, make it axis a different. But if you don't put a device information in the tensor method, and then you call the two method in the computational graph, it becomes non different So you first x uh, x prime is on CPU. Then you have the edges, which is x. The edge is two operation, right? But we want take the actually what we want is want to take the derivative with respect to x prime, which is on CPU. But occasionally, uh, the accidentally we take the gradient with the x. X is not leaflet. You can think uh, think it as a child of the x prime, so you cannot do that that type of thing. So just uh, be aware of this. This is a common mistake if you are new to hyperbolic. One problem with the backward is uh, is that it can only uh, compute the first grid, but in some applications we want to compute higher order gradients. What uh, we should do. So we need to use another function called torch grid grid function. So we use another. Uh, we use the same uh, example here. Uh, X W B. They are request gradient, and we build a, a computational graph here. And we can use grid X torch grid grid method to do the same thing. Which the first input is the objective, and the second input is to your parameters of interest and you need to when you want to compute the uh, just compute the first gradient the grid graph doesn't have to be uh, true set true here but we want to compute the second grid, uh, gradient then we call this grid xx then we call torch the all grid the grid and then now the input is grid x and the, the parameter of interest are still x then we can compute the second gradient uh, derivative. That's how we compute. In PyTorch, we compute higher order derivatives. And you can see that we also, if you really don't start the true here, I think, I suspect it will give me error, but I'm not sure. Yeah, right. You see, there is an error. When you compute higher gradients, you need to tell PyTorch because as I we uh, at the introduction part, uh, we uh, I introduced PyTorch as a dynamic um, uh, dynamic computational graph. When you call the algorithm once, the computation graph is gone. So you need to pipe PyTorch. Okay, I'm going to compute a second grid. You just you need to keep the computational graph on. So this is crucial when you want to use. Um, higher order optimizers like the RBFGS. And the PyTorch can also compute uh, the gradients of uh, the gradients of, uh, of loss functions. And uh, for here I have a, um, a logistic regression uh, example here. The input dimension is uh, the, uh, there are n examples and uh, the, the input dimension is five, and then I run my run my generate a um, uh, input, and uh, and then send it to device, and then I generate the randomly generate uh, 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 training uh, labels. Uh, this is, doesn't make any sense, just for demonstration. And this is my weight vector. And the weight vector is a d by one vector, and it, we need to tell the PyTorch we want to take the gradients of that vector. And we we can initialize if it is to zero, but normally we use normal initializations or other uh, initialization techniques. And y hat is the output uh, uh, is the prediction, which define you can see this is the logistic regression. It's a sigmoid function. Uh, in the sigmoid function, it, it is the linear operation. And uh, 
And, uh, yeah, and uh, this is the cross entropy, binary cross entropy. And then we compute, uh, when we call the loss backward, and then we can see we can compute the gradients of the weight vector. Uh, now, the, the gradients of the loss if we raise back to the weight vector. And uh, in machine learning models, the first step is to, pro to feed the data into the machine learning models. And there are several techniques that we need to randomly, randomly permutate, uh, permutate the orders of the training examples. And uh, if you have 1 million or 10 million training examples, we also do mean batches uh, training. So if you implement that for by yourself, it kind of trivial and uh, tedious, and the PyTorch has a solution for you. And uh, those solutions are implemented in the data sets and the data loader. Um, so data sets basically is the abstractions of your data sets. And the data, the data loader is uh, when you, uh, uh, you need to, uh, the data loader will provide your data sets to the uh, learning, uh, to, to your uh, model, uh, learning algorithm, the training of your algorithms like you, it will, randomly shuffle your data sets and we, each time it will provide a uh, main batches. And there are several uh, existing very famous well, famous uh, data sets are already have implementation C in PyTorch. So for example, MNIST is the it's a, it's a hand handwriting recognition data sets. And uh, we can just uh, use Torch it is implemented in Torch Vision data sets and the MNIST. Um, so it needs to download it, and the transformer um, defines how would you pre process your data. Like the, it is the uh, computer vision data, so we need to normalize it and convert it to a tensor. And uh, for here, we set the batch size to 6, and then we initialize a data loader. The data loader takes the uh, data set as input, and also the batch size, and then you want to each time, each epoch, you want to shuffle the data set, and uh, you just need to flag the shuffle is, is equal to true. And uh, basically, the training loader is an iterator, and uh, it is it's not an iterator, whether you need to use the, the tree, tree, train loader as an iterator. And then for example, um, so each time if we want to a main batch uh, of the training data, and then we need to uh, call uh, the next, we need to uh, generate an iterator for the training loader and then generate the next batch. And then we have to provide you the training training examples and this, uh, their labels. And you see for here the batch size is six. So the input is a six by one by 28 by 28. So one by 28 by 28, it means that the uh, training images are black and white image because it, it just has one channel. And the dimensions are 28 by 28. And the labels, they are like they are labels. 900439. And uh, we can visualize it. And this is the amnesty data set. And then what if we have, uh, we, uh, what if we want to use our, our own data sets? For example, uh, in the newest uh, assignment, uh, we have the back node data set. Uh, we do, basically, we do the same thing. Um, so for the back node data sets, we have a train and a test.csv file, and we can use the NumPy to load it. And how do we incorporate our own data set into the data sets uh, provided by PyTorch? Basically, PyTorch uh, allows you to override uh, the, uh, the data set uh, object. What you need to do is uh, uh, three steps. So in the initialization, you need to provide how, where is data, and uh, what it is. If you want to separate the training and testing, and then you need to tell us the data set is train, contains the training examples or testing examples. So here, so 9 and 10, line and, not a line and 9 10, I load the data. And uh, I do some preprocessing. And uh, if the user want to use it as a train data set, then I will just provide it as a train and a y tree. And if you want to use as a, a testing data, I will just provide xt and yt. 
And this is very important. Um, so basically, in this method, uh, you need to implement it. Uh, you need to, so the default parameters of the get atom method uh, is uh, index. When the users input index, you need to index your training examples. So if I put zero here, uh, then it will return uh, the first training examples. And then you need also need to specify how many, uh, uh, how many examples in the data set. And uh, those are the methods uh, the data loader will need. You don't need to worry about that. You just uh, blindly uh, implement that, and uh, the the data loader will use by themselves by itself. So in the line uh, 36 and the 37, I initialize two uh, backdoor data set, and then I tell where is the data and uh, what is the data set. If it's a tree data set, and then it's a test data set. And then you can see that the length of the training data set is uh, 800 examples, and the test data has uh, 500 examples. Then I initialize a data loader. The data loader takes the, our custom customized data sets as input, and this is the batch. We also put a batch size. And uh, you see this is a classical loop we used in machine learning. So in the outer loop, we have the epoch, we uh, epoch number, and in the inner loop, we do mini-batch training, right? So each, uh, in, the, in the inner loop, each time it will provide a mini-batch training examples. So for here, actually it's four-dimensional. So it is, each time it will provide a wall 128 by four, uh, as the design matrix and the uh, 128 by 1 as the label. So that's uh, how you use the uh, PyTorch uh, PyTorch uh, data sets. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, uh, module. Uh, any questions about uh, how the gradient and this set? Okay, so then I will uh, start with uh, linear regression examples. So with the PyTorch N module. So first of all, we need to generate, I will just, uh, just uh, you, you can, you can uh, go over the code by yourself later, but I will just uh, talk about here. So basically, this is our, we want to learn a linear function. This is the training, tra uh, so th the blue line is the testing examples. The, the red of our training examples. And then in the real world, they are, we received noisy observations. So for here, I insert a small noise here. So basically that's our training examples and the testing examples. And the second step is uh, like we talked uh, in the previous example, uh, we need to put our, we don't have to do this, but uh, it's good uh, habit to do this. And uh, so we put our training examples to turn the NumPy and the array to a PyTorch dataset. And we define a simple trivial dataset here. And now, uh, the key. So we need to implement a linear regressor. And the linear regressor inherit from the NN module. And uh, so the point, uh, so line five, define the linear by uh, using the PyTorch built-in linear function to uh, as a linear uh, linear module here and the end of linear has parameter here but we don't need to know about that uh, we just need to tell the linear uh, linear module what is the input dimension and what's the output dimension and uh, since it is a simple linear regressor the forward function we just need to uh, do a by giving an x, we just uh, call our linear function and uh, use the x as the input. So that's the output, right? So that's the, how we define the linear regressor using uh, n module. And uh, then we initialize the uh, n module since in this example the input is 1D and output is 1D also. And then we define the train, training loader and the test loader. And this is our training 
type of parameters. Uh, we want to train the linear aggressor for 1,000 epochs and they're using uh, the uh, learning rate as 1.01. Uh, and uh, we want to, uh, then we use a small regulators. Uh, this is a rec L2 regulator. And then we initialize a um, optimizer. Uh, this is the PyTorch the optim module, and then we initialize an item module. The item, the optimizer, needs to know what is the parameters need to uh, optimize, and what is the learning rate, and uh, what is the regulator. And for in this loop, since it only has 20 training examples, I will not do uh, mid batch training. So I will just uh, do the, each time I will just pop, pop, uh, pass the, feed the whole, uh, for each epoch I will pass the entire data. And you can see, After 1,000 epochs, the training of RMIC and the, the predicting RMIC is, uh, is very small. And then we can also plot the training loss, uh, training and uh, uh, pre test RMIC. And then we can also visualize the regressor we learned. The, the green line is the ground truth, and the red dot is the training examples. And the blue line is the regressor we learn by using Atom. And the gray line is the model signal initialization without any training procedure. And uh, let's get to a more challenging uh, regression task. Um, so now we want to do a sine sign function regression. You see this, uh, we have a sine function here. And then the blue line is also uh, is still the testing examples. And the red dot are the training examples. And now we need to build a uh, neural network. So, so how how uh, mm -hmm. does Dr. Jura talk about the neural network in this course? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then you know what is the neural network is. Basically, the neural network is a uh, uh, during uh, in the each layer. It is, it is a linear operation, but after like, each layer, it will have a nonlinear operation. We could use Veru, Tan H, and a sigmoid. So basically, it's a linear, uh, linear, linear operation, nonlinear operation, linear operation, nonlinear operation. So, so this is uh, the neural network we uh, implement using PyTorch. So for here, uh, I want to. Uh, Initialize a two hidden layer neural network. Each hidden layer has uh, six a four neurons, and uh, this is how we define it. And we want to use um, temp h as the activation function. So first of all, we need to build a uh, 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 build build a module. And uh, so, so I said before that the building blocks of neural network is the linear operator and uh, your activation function. And uh, you need to concatenate those linear classifiers and uh, nonlinear operations into a container. So the the very powerful uh, powerful uh, uh, powerful function of N module that you can use other small N modules as building blocks for the larger N modules. And then I, when you call it the, the parameters, when you want to call the parameters method of the larger uh, N modules, the optimizer will be uh, will aware of all the parameters all in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the small N modules I used as building blocks. So for uh, PyTorch support different containers, you can see the official document. And uh, for here, I used the module list. And uh, for here, uh, so in 12 and 13, I just uh, basically uh, initialize um, uh, linear operators and linear regressors and, um, and the activation functions. I put it into a list. Then I call the module list and it will be build a bigger 
uh, and module, which is a neural network. And in the forward, I just use, uh, just define how the axis propagate forward. And uh, so you can see this is the abstract of our new network. It has a linear, nonlinear, linear, nonlinear, and a linear. And this is the auto, right? And this new network looks small, but it still have uh, four thousand parameters. Now see. And uh, as before, we also uh, have the, the data loaders for testing and uh, training. And uh, now, since we have many, many parameters, um, we want to train more epochs. And uh, since it has more, much more parameters, number of parameters than before, and we want, we don't want to be that uh, aggressive. So I want to set the learning rate to 0 0.001 instead of 0 0.01. And I used to use a small regulator. And uh, you can see that. Actually, it trains pretty fast. And uh, when you have a large model, you want to don't want to train every time you want when you want to use it. And PyTorch also support that if you have a train model, you can also uh, save it and next time you just load it and uh, use it. So that's uh, uh, you can use Torch to save and uh, the state date stores the current state of the parameters, and then you save it. You can save it into a big file. And now let's uh, also print out the print out the training and testing. This is one. Let's put it in later. Um, sorry. That's the problem with the notebook. Here. So the red, uh, blue is the testing, the ground truth, and uh, the blue, uh, the green is the the regressor we learned, uh, which is neural network, and uh, the gray is the initial, the random initialization of the neural network. You see uh, the horizon line, and uh, you can also so for here, so you this. Uh, for here, we save it the current uh, state of the train model, and the next time we don't need to train again. We just uh, use model. We, we can create a new model. Let the new new model load the, the previous pre-trained parameters, and then we can just uh, use it. And uh, you see, the purple line is the pre-loaded model. That's uh, how we used the uh, module. Oh, we uh, I need to get faster. We don't have too much time. So for the optimizer, sometimes uh, so when you have a very large model and then you want to use just a one learning parameters, you want the parameters uh, decay. When after thousand and uh, two thousand epochs, and that is called uh, scheduling. And the PyTorch also support that. Uh, so for here, I still do a uh, sinus regression here, and this is our uh, training. And this is our new network. And then the difference is here. So now I use uh, step uh, scheduler. It means that after each 100 epoch, after one epoch, it will discount it by a discount factor is 0.99. And previously, so after previously, we just have uh, those uh, 25 to 30 steps, which is a basic training procedure. And uh, now we need to call also call the scheduler step. And uh, it will schedule your 
Learn your rate. Mm. But sometimes we want to use high order. So you see that the SGD and the IDAM, they are iterative uh, training. Uh, they are iterative optimization uh, op op optimizers. Right, but some uh, it need to you need to decide how many epochs uh, you want to run and uh, what is the learning rate. But sometimes we don't we don't want to decide those hyperparameters for training, and uh, we want to use high order optimizers like the LBFGS. For LBFGS, uh, you don't need to define uh, how many epochs you want to train. It will train until the convergence. It is a second order minimizer, so it is uh, really fast. But it has the risk of overfitting. Um, so how to use the LBFG as the second order uh, an optimizer? Uh, these are the same. Uh, look at the nine, uh, line nine. The we just initialize a LBFGS optimizer here, and then it also take the uh, parameters. Know that. The learning rate for our BFGS here is not the learning rate we see in a uh, iterative uh, optimizer. This is kind of an initialized uh, uh, learning rate, and uh, it will adapt change during uh, during the training procedure. But it's kind of a black box to us, and uh, we can uh, we can also pass the how many what's the maximum iteration we want to train. For the high order training procedure, uh, high order optimizer, uh, the training procedure is uh, is quite different. So you need to uh, write a method tells the LBFGS what's the each training procedures. And now uh, it, it is it is writing the uh, cooler function. You see that we want to zero out the optimizer's gradient, and uh, what the predicate we want to compute the loss, and you see. We have to use the retain graph flag as true because uh, uh, the LBFJS is going to use the second derivative information. If you don't have that, then we will give you an error. Uh, you see, that's the problem with LBFJS. It is runs really fast. And we don't need to specify what, how many training iterations. We just need to uh, pass a what's the max number of iterations we want to know. But LBFGS has the risk of uh, overfeed. You see that it fits the training examples perfectly, but it does not know since we don't have the. It, it is a black box to us, so we don't have uh, access to see what's the validation error. And uh, then we don't have the access to early stopping. You see, it fits the tree example perfectly. But uh, you see that the general generalization error is kind of blocked. So that's how we do use our BFGS. And now, Basically, you are fully equipped it if you do the machine learning research. You can do, actually, if you want, just want to use a machine learning as your tools for your own research, that's more than enough. But what if uh, I want to do something new, some, try some new modules, and I, want, I still want to use the same procedures uh, framework like, like we see in the previous three examples. Uh, so in, in this, uh, for here, I, I, I want to introduce how do you define your own uh, module. Use the N module to build your own uh, example, uh, uh, build your own model. So for example, uh, I'm not sure, but I suppose that PyTorch does not have the polynomial regression uh, model implemented in their code base. So I first I generate a uh, this is the kind of very weird polynomial uh, data and uh, the red is still training and the blue is testing and uh, now I need to specify my own uh, model. The, my own model is called polynomial and I also need to inherit from the uh, end module uh, object. 
The difference is that so previously we used uh, PyTorch built-in uh, modules, small modules uh, 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 as building blocks, but now we, I don't have the access. So I have to tell, specifically tell what's the training parameters, trainable parameters, because we don't want our optimizer to train some of my, uh, to train some parameters we don't want. We need to specify what kind of parameters we need. And uh, that parameters you need to use to end, end the parameter object. So it is kind of a special tensor, but if your weights are uh, implemented using the uh, parameter, then, then everything is done. So you don't need to worry about if your optimizer can can see these parameters. As long as it as it using the end of parameter object, then your uh, optimizer will see it and uh, optimize it automatically. So now here I have the weights and define. Uh, so the I still have a forward function and I see uh, nothing to know that. So uh, I have the weights here and I so need to normalize it. And uh, here, normal is a special normal, and uh, it's, it's commonly used in machine learning. And uh, if you uh, implement your own module, then you don't have to uh, see a very abstraction, internet abstraction. Uh, as we see before, then you need to uh, implement a uh, a printout function is like a string function in the in the Java or Python. Then you need to tell us what kind of information in your own module. And now I initialize a module, a polynomial module, and uh, the max order is ten. Now I want to to train uh, ten thousand uh, epochs. And you see, this is uh, exactly what the actor print uh, actor is telling me. Uh, representation function tells you, and, uh, in, and then I train it, and then you see the green is my learn regressor. And then we can also reuse our own implemented uh, our own uh, module uh, as building blocks of a uh, more advanced module. So for here, PyTorch has the implementation as a linear function as we uh, as we use in the neural neural network example. But here I implement a uh, linear a linear module by myself, and I build a logistic regressor module uh, by myself using my uh, myself uh, implemented uh, linear function. And uh, this is the training procedure, and you can see that this is the training and the tilting arrow. And now I, I can also use uh, my my linear module uh, to re-implement the neural network. And uh, for here, you can see that I use my own linear module. And now I test it on back data set, and you can see it achieved perfect training accuracy and test accuracy. So yeah, so I just need to two more minutes. So you can go basically. For here, uh, with this, you can implement any model you want, you, even though you have a very weird model. So now let's look at the last example, which is the step-by-step -step example from a convolutional neural network on C4. So C4 is a it's a data, uh, open data set uh, released by Toronto. It's a ten classification um, ten classification data set with uh, colorful you know, images. And uh, this is the visualization of the CPAR data set. And you see, uh, this is on uh, the training examples. And then track for shape cat are their uh, labels. And uh, we define a convolutional neural network here. Um, if you are not very familiar with convolutional neural network, it's, uh, it's, it's totally fine. Basically, this neural network, uh, convolutional neural network, has uh, three convolutional. Uh, layers, then I, uh, after flatten out, I put it into a fully connected neural network. So that's the whole module. And I define the combinational graph here in the forward function. And this model is uh, much larger than we have seen before. This model have uh, almost 6 million parameters. 
but still a kind of small model nowadays. And uh, we know the Sephardic has, uh, has, I think, has uh, over uh, 100,000 examples. So we have to do the mid batch training. And then we still use Adam as the optimizer. And then the difference uh, before uh, we have seen before is that each time I actually use a mini batch data, data, and I need to send it to a GPU since my model which also runs on GPU. And uh, each time I compute uh, with the prediction uh, correct, correct uh, correctness on testing data, and then I train it. Um, you see, after 10 epochs, it achieved uh, almost 90% accuracy on training and 80% on testing. And uh, you can see that since we are doing mini batch loss, uh, mini batch training now, so it's kind of noisy in the, in, the loss, in the loss history. So we look at uh, loss. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, sorry about the delay. <laughs>